Samsung has just announced the Galaxy A80, their first smartphone ever to have a full-screen, Super AMOLED Infinity display. There's no notch, there is no punch hole, the front is pretty much all screen. And there's actually quite a few new features that Samsung has debuted in this phone right here, but to me, the most exciting thing is this camera. Let's find out why. So the A80 has a triple camera setup, which is cool in itself, but it's nothing we haven't ever seen before. You've got a 3D depth sensor, a 48 megapixel main camera, and then the ultra wide on the far right. And aside from not having a telephoto lens here, it's kind of similar to the setup we've seen on the Galaxy S10. You can seamlessly transition between the main camera and the ultra wide, depending on how much you want to capture. And this new animation they've added makes that transition a little less abrupt. And what I was impressed by is that, like its more expensive cousin, it does have most of the same camera features, like 4K video recording, slow motion, as well as super slow motion. It's even got the same super steady video at 1080p that the S10 phones do. Although I would say this is not as as good as the stabilization on the P30 Pro, generally speaking. Now, because we've also got that 3D depth sensor, it does open up a few new possibilities, like being able to use augmented reality to measure objects in real time. But before we can fully get to that, this camera flips around. When you flip to the front camera, the entire camera module rises and then turns. And yeah, sure, that in itself is pretty cool, but the implication is much more important, and it's actually something I've been asking for on a phone for a long time. It means you can take selfies with the main camera on this device, and the quality looks amazing. It means you can take them with the full ultrawide, the same ultrawide you would use to take your rear landscape photos. And it also means you can take good quality live focus selfies with nice blurred backgrounds and crisp defined edges. And whilst it's not yet time to throw your DSLR out the door, this phone can also do live focus video. And it's better than I thought it would be. It takes advantage of that depth sensor to calculate in real time what is foreground and what is background. It only works in 1080p, as opposed to standard selfie video, which you can shoot in full 4K. So that still makes this one of the first phones in the world that can do that. Oh yeah, and if you are one of the five people that actually use these AR stickers, they do work pretty well here. Alright, there is one thing that worries me a little bit about this phone. When you open up that camera module, aside from having just lots of moving parts in one go, you've also got the fact that there are two stages to the movement of that camera rotation. It's not one continuous smooth movement, and so that does make me think that there's potential over time for this to start to go wrong a little bit, but we'll have to wait and see. Alright, the display kind of surprised me, because it's a massive 6.7 inches in size with only a full HD plus resolution. I was a little worried. Thankfully, having spent some time with it, I would say it is one of the highlights of the phone. It is insanely bright and super vivid thanks to that super AMOLED technology, and because there are no physical cutouts in the phone, in some ways it looks more impressive than even high-end flagships like the P30 Pro. Sadly, compared to that phone, and compared to the glamorous device this thing is pitched as, I think it kind of looks a little bit dull. The A80 does have a few different colour options, but most of them I found were pretty dull looking, which, considering how exciting the concept of this rotating camera is, feels a little bit contrasting. Out of all of them, this one's probably my favourite, this rose gold finish, and I do like the bronze metallic shiny sides. The phone loses the dedicated Bixby button we had on the S10. I don't think too many people are going to be bothered by this, but what you will probably feel a little bit more is the lack of a headphone jack. Alright, when it comes to the software, I don't think people are going to have much room to complain here. It's running Samsung's One UI skin, based on Android 9 Pie. And I like the way it looks, I like the simple aesthetic, I like the way it's animated, and I like the speed. And compared to the experience on the S10, nothing feels substantially different here, and that's a good thing. There's also a little bit more going on behind the screen in this phone. You've got an in-display fingerprint scanner in the bottom half, and then in the top half, instead of a traditional earpiece, you've got a speaker underneath the screen. For me, personally, one of the most important pillars of a smartphone is good battery life. It's so freeing to have a phone where you can almost forget about the need to charge it during the day, and it's looking like this phone will fall into that category. It's got a 3,700 mAh capacity, not amazing, but also decent, considering that this sliding mechanism probably takes up a fair bit of space inside the phone. The fact that the resolution is a little lower than top-tier flagships, and the fact that it's running on the Snapdragon 730 chip instead of maybe an 855, will also help boost this battery a little bit. 
and they're combining it with 25 watt fast charging, which I was kind of surprised by considering that this is beyond the charging speed of even the S10 phones. So yeah, there is a lot of cool stuff going on here, and in some ways, even leapfrogs the Galaxy S10 and the S10 Plus. This is a 679 euro phone, which on one hand, no, is not cheap, but on the other hand, does leave a good amount of price gap between this and the more expensive options. But just bear in mind that compared to that phone, you are missing out on a more powerful chip, as well as stereo speakers, you just get a single mono speaker in the corner here. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be massively appreciated if you could smash that subscribe button down below. Ton more cool stuff coming. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.